Okay, Vince, I want to talk about the NAR settlement. Uh, basically, aye, it's a aye, 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 half aye. a billion dollar settlement. I mean, this is yeah. isn't is that what NAR is supposed to exist for? To kind of to fight for these things and and not have such a dramatic change, uh, you know, in the structure of housing. I, I think that NAR was facing a, an unwinnable situation, and unfortunately, it shouldn't have been unwinnable. This whole thing about you know uh, splitting the commission between the seller and the buyer agent. Um, that should easily have been theirs to win, but they lost in Missouri. And as soon as they lost in Missouri, with again, I think it was about a, more than a half a billion dollars decision in that case, all of a sudden, everybody started coming out with class action suits against them. If, if I was them, I'd be looking at this going and saying, we cannot afford to continue yeah. fighting all of these cases individually across. We've got to, we've got to find some way. So they've come out with a settlement that's going to go into effect, uh, ostensibly, I think, was it June 1st, um, as long as the judge approves it. Um, which will wipe out all of those class action settlements. This will be a national, you know, an omnibus settlement, um, which is going to make it so that now, uh, the, as I say, you can negotiate uh, with uh, with your uh, bu uh, buyer and seller agents. All the news that came out as soon as it happened was like, oh, suddenly you'll be able to negotiate. We're like, I think you were able to negotiate all along, right? This is ridiculous. People just yeah. don't do it. Yeah. Except now, well, you can. Ne and they said, is this going to bring the price of housing down? Do you think it's going to bring the price of housing down? I mean, I, I so I, I know you don't because we've had a little talk I about this, but but, but uh, I agree with I me do, or you'll lose. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> listen. I, I I think potentially it's going to disrupt, and whenever there's a disruption, um, there there is going to be, I, I believe, I see some imbalance in the marketplace over the long haul. I think you might be right. It could potentially, you know, maybe make a more mature marketplace. But but who's going to benefit off of that? I think this is going to be a terrible situation for for the industry as a whole and for consumers as a whole. Listen, if I'm a seller, right? Uh, I, I, again, I was reading all these news stuff. Oh, it's going to bring the house price down. It's not going to bring the house price down. Gonna, the seller won't have to won't have to pay as much in commission to the uh, real estate agent. Therefore, they'll bring the house price down. None of my friends would do that. I don't know about your friends. Nobody I know does that. First question they ask when they're looking at putting their house on the market and talking to a real estate agent isn't, what's your commission rate? It's, how much can you get me for this house? Yeah, yeah. Now, if you tell somebody they're going to get them $300,000 for a house, yeah. $400,000 for a house, and then you start negotiating over commission, you're still not going to change that $400,000 for the house. Doesn't make a difference. But what not, am I walking away with? It's not going to change anything. That's right. all they care Except about. Now, now it's going to be so much harder to find a buyer because the buyer who never had to pay for a real estate agent before, yeah. it's going to have to pay for a real estate agent. That could be ten, fifteen thousand mm. dollars $15,000 to pay the buyer's commission. Where are they going to come up with that? They can barely come up with a down payment for a yeah. lot of this stuff in the first place. It's going to make it terrible. Or what they're going to do is they're going to forego using a buyer's agent completely. Now they're on their own. And especially first-time home buyers don't really know how to navigate this. I think you've mentioned that you think that this may be a, a big opportunity for the, the Zillows and the Redfins of the world to come in and really sort of be that interface for the home buyer. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, think, I think real estate tech is going to have to come into play if this is our scenario. But the worst thing I heard was somebody actually saying, this is going to be great because this is going to deregulate them like when we deregulated the airlines. And I thought, does anybody think you're actually paying less today and getting better service when you try to book an airplane than you did 15 years ago? I, I certainly <laughs> am not. This is a terrible scenario, I think, for, for consumers. I think it's going to raise the cost of housing. People are still going to ask for as much as they could, and then they're going to ask for more. It's not going to make it easier. It's going to make it harder for first-time home buyers that don't have the wherewithal to come in. And housing, like everything else, is going to be there for the rich. And it's going to be so much less for people of moderate means. I, I thought we were supposed to be arguing here because I kind of agree with you. So... I, I, does that mean you win? That means I win this one. What? But you know what? <laughs> I'll take you out. I'll take you out as my sidekick. We both win. All right. There we go. <laughs>